Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go inside Utah politics. We do begin this morning with Hinckley Institute of Politics Director Jason Perry here to get us caught up on all the big races. Jason, always glad to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Mm, glad to be with you, Glenn. Okay, when we're talking election this time around, there's no doubt you have to start with the Senate. That oh, is yes. the race at the top of the ticket that everyone is talking about, including on a national stage. Why is this receiving so much national attention? Well, you are right. We have publications from all over the country, people wanting to be here on election night. This is big because it's unique for Utah. This is a very unique experiment we're seeing in our Senate race, but also, if you kind of watch these commercials, the very balance of power is sort of on the line in Washington, D.C., and for the state of Utah, that is not something we're usually having a big, big influence over. But this time we might be, which is why people are watching. Right, you have to go back to the 70s to a time we didn't send a Republican senator to the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, Talk about the uniqueness of this race. What makes it unique? Well, it's unique because it's not a traditional Republican versus a Democrat. The fact that the Utah Democrats decided to not send a candidate forward and to support Evan McMullen is a huge experiment. This is something we've not seen in the state of Utah before, and it is going to tell us a lot. If Evan McMullen pulls it off or he comes close, that is going to say a lot about the two-party system in the state of Utah. It's going to say a lot about where Republicans are and even more about where Democrats are. Let's talk about the polls. Really, they've been all over the place. If you take a look at Senator Lee's internals, they have him up big. Mm -hmm. Evan McMullen's internals have him up by a very slight margin. And then really everything in between. We saw the latest Emerson poll showing Senator Lee with a double digit lead at 10 points. Talk about the polling and, and where it's been and where you believe this race really sits right now. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see the very big difference in these polls. You always sort of discount the internal polls right. from the campaigns. Of course, they're going to give a pretty good picture. So you kind of look at some of these national polls that are looking at the state, and even our own poll through the Hinckley Institute of Politics. And about three weeks ago, as we, as we polled, uh, Mike Lee was ahead by four points uh, in this race. It has been pretty close, and it stayed that way. But what's interesting and what I'm watching for is the polls are having a hard time capturing the undecided vote. In our poll, it was 12% percent of Utah and said they hadn't made up their mind yet who they're going to vote for. And there is a very real struggle right there. Do the, do the moderate Republicans, and that was about a quarter of those, do they go with the traditional Republican? Do they take a chance on, the, the, on Evan McMullen? There's a, there's a struggle right there. And it's hard to poll when there's just no clear answer for that group of people. Talk about the strategy the campaigns are going through to target those people, because it's very clear. Senator Lee's campaign trying to tie Evan McMullen yeah. to President Biden and liberal Democrats. Yeah. And Evan McMullen from the very beginning has really focused on tying Senator Lee to pre former President Trump and January 6th. Two parts of the strategy, and it's very interesting to say, see it play out. First, you try to tie your candidate to the, to the person that everyone in your party doesn't like. And that's why you see the Biden pool against the Trump pool. We're gonna see that continue, which is interesting. But how, how they're trying to counter that is by endorsements of their own. That's why you see a, a John Huntsman come out supporting Mike Lee. This is Mike Lee trying to, to really appeal to those moderate Republicans, and Evan McMullen is doing the same. He brings uh, former Republican Party chairs like Michael Steele into town or you know, Mark Hamill. You mm -hmm. start seeing some of these interesting people who are trying to say to that moderate group, the movable middle, you can support this per these people because I support these people. What's one key you were watching as we head into the final days? So it is a very clear question of turnout for moderates. That is the big thing. Both sides, when you talk about Evan McMullen, we know that Democrats are largely going to show for him and a lot of independents. We'll see how big that, that percentage is of those moderates. That is the key thing for me right now, is the winner of this one, or the one that kind of claims a piece of those moderate voters in the state of Utah, both on the right and, side, mm -hmm. right and left of, the, of center. Let's talk more about endorsements. You brought it up uh, briefly, but probably one yeah. of the biggest endorsements is one that didn't happen, oh. and that was with yeah. his colleague in the Senate, Senator Mitt Romney, who is staying silent on this. Mm -hmm. We even saw Senator Lee go national and make a plea to get Senator Romney on board. What do you make of that dynamic yeah. there? This is so interesting. Uh, I, I will tell you, Senator Lee does not need a Mitt Romney endorsement to win this race if he, if he does. In fact, it's not even completely clear it would help him uh, to have that because they have different parts of the spectrum. But what I think was interesting on that one right there and why Mike Lee went on Tucker Carlson is because it's sort of irritating to him that everywhere he goes, the first question he gets asked is, why didn't 
um, why didn't Mitt Romney endorse you? It's like the first thing we talk about. So it's mm -hmm. just, I think it was a little irritating for him uh, there as well. And so I think he wanted to just try to get by that. They, they have not endorsed each other. Mike Lee didn't right. endorse Mitt Romney last time he ran. And just, I mean, they're friends. Mitt Romney doesn't want Republicans to lose the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, but still. It's just an uh, interesting dynamic that a lot of people are making something of. Yeah, that, that's why I think it's interesting that it's such a big story yeah. because six years ago, or not six years ago, but four years ago yeah. when Romney was running, that really wasn't uh, a focus at all. Let's talk about the money pouring in yeah. on this race. Wow. It's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Where's all this money coming from? You know, that's what's so interesting. But these candidates, I mean, combined, it's over 15 million. Mm -hmm. This is the most expensive Senate race in Utah history by a lot. Right. And, and it's more than that. You, you kind of do another 15 plus million dollars of outside groups putting mm -hmm. money into this. You cannot turn on your TV without seeing a commercial now. It's, it's big money into the state of Utah and there's no sign that that's slowing. Yeah, our, our viewers know all too well what we're talking about because it's in every single commercial every break. Commercial. Uh, let's talk about the house races. Any surprises there? Uh, no, is, is the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, all of our, all four congressional representatives are in really great shape. I think you look at like a Congressman Stewart, I think of national publication gave them a 99 to one chance of mm -hmm. winning this race. Those have not been hugely competitive. I think all four of our congressional delegates are, uh, of our delegation are gonna yeah. go back. Let's talk about the fourth because that in the past historically has been one Democrats yeah. have been competitive in and it doesn't appear according to polling that that is the case anymore. Why is that? It, it just isn't this year. Uh, what's, it's just interesting to see what's happened in the fourth congressional district. You know, it has swapped hands a couple of times, Republicans and Democrats, and a lot of that is tied to turnout. Sometimes like huge amount of Democrats will show up for a certain initiative or you know something that's on the ballot that drives it, which has changed. But uh, the demographics have changed in that district. It's, it's a little more red and with redistricting here now, it is solidly Republican. So we may have seen the end of that being truly competitive for a little while. So much so that the video we were just showing showed two candidates that were not the incumbent in that race because he didn't show up for the debate. Yeah. You know that all too well from the primary debate. Yeah. Uh, that's not even seemingly hurting him one yeah. bit. It's true. I was a moderator for yeah, that that's one why for, I say that. for one candidate, mm -hmm. which was interesting. I, I think it is it is not going to impact uh, his election prospects at all. Mm -hmm. And he did sort of sort of make up for that in doing a, a debate a little bit later uh, with, through a professor from, right. from the University of Utah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be fatal to his campaign. In fact, I'm not even sure it's going to have it make a yeah. dent at all. What's one race <clears throat> in the state legislature you're keeping an eye on? Well, maybe it's just for the pure entertainment value of it. Uh, Steve Handy's race. Mm -hmm. He's up against Trevor Lee. This is up in Davis County and Layton. Um, this is the ultimate test of a write-in candidate. You have a well-known elected official who, you know, ill-advisedly did not get signatures, got beat at convention. Uh, with his name ID and the money he has behind him, if Steve Handy can't pull it off, I'm going to say it's going to be hard to win a write-in contest any time in the future. So if there's one that can be one, you say this is the one you're Th looking This at. is the one, yeah, because uh, Steve Handy has great name ID. He was liked by his colleagues. He, he lost at convention by a small group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is really an ultimate test on the write-in process. We always want to see yeah. this is the test. And we will be watching that on election night. Okay, we have about 30 seconds left. What would you s expect for turnout this election? Oh, midterms are historically not great for turnout. You know, we love to show up for a presidential election, not so much in the off cycle. Uh, I think Utahns have fully embraced mail-in balloting. I think we're going to see a lot of them. And I think we're going to see a, a, a usual number of people voting this election, uh, it's mostly because I think everyone is interested in the Senate race. Yeah, definitely. And, and when the ballot shows up at your home, it is a lot easier to fill out and, and send it back in. And we've seen that in the results mm -hmm. as well. Incredible insight. Thanks so much for being here and sharing with it this morning. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Glenn. You bet. Still to come, a new poll 